Joining me now are Democratic strategist Matthew Lutman and Gina Loudon, Trump supporter and host of America Trends with Gina Loudon. Thanks for coming in, guys. Uh, Matt, presidents have criticised judges before, especially when they disagreed on matters of law. But has there ever been a time when a president would question the motives of a judge, especially before a ruling has been handed down? There's a lot about this administration already that's unprecedented. Going after the judges, I don't think benefits Trump at all, especially when they're about to make this decision. I think what's really fascinating to people who are watching this administration for this first couple of weeks is it just doesn't seem very competent. There's a lot of focus on, obviously, this Muslim ban, which Trump said he would do and he's now trying to do. There's also a lot of focus on how poorly it was rolled out, how other cabinet members and other parts of the administration knew nothing about it. They could have waited weeks or months before they did this. What I want to know from the Trump administration is they promised economic growth. They promised that they were going to repeal and replace Obamacare. They're now spending all of their time in court defending this. I don't think this is what Trump, Donald Trump was elected to do. Well, Gina, as a Trump supporter, do you have any concerns the president is stepping on the separation of powers? If this was you know, President Hillary Clinton calling out judges, would you be outraged? I think the thing that we have to recognize is that middle America has been frustrated with a, a runaway judiciary for a long, long time. So once again, those on the left are making the same mistake they made throughout the campaign, which is thinking that because I live in L.A. or I live in New York, that I understand what people in middle America are thinking. And I don't think we do, but I do think the president does. The president understands that middle America really has a problem with unelected people surrounding Serving long, long terms, uh, you know, having no one to be accountable to, just running away. And, and this criticism doesn't just come from the right, by the way. You know, many on the left have criticized uh, activist judges as well. So, again, I think that the majority of the uh, American people uh, agree with what's going on here with the president on this issue. And those of us who talk about it a lot might be surrounded by people who uh, think otherwise. And I understand that. OK, uh, well, you know, the president's nominee for the Supreme Court described the president's attacks on the judiciary uh, as demoralizing and disheartening. He made those comments to Democrat Senator Richard Blumenthal, who urged him to make a public statement. Listen to this. He was noncommittal, and that's one reason why I remain deeply concerned about this nomination. This president's attacks on the judiciary goes to the core absolutely to a foundational principle of our constitutional system and this judge needs to show that he is willing to stand up to the president so, and stop his bullying. Gina, do you think Neil Gorsuch is obligated in any way to, to speak out, to show that he will actually stand up to the president? Well, I think if indeed this meeting did happen the way it's been reported to have happened, which I, I'm not sure there's confirmation of that from Gorsuch so far, but I think if that did happen, I think it does demonstrate the precise independence that uh, many in the Trump administration were saying that they believe this nominee had anyway. And so I, I don't see any particular reason why we should think that any nominee would be locked up with any particular president. We've seen nominees up and down throughout history uh, disagree with the person that nominated them. So this doesn't come as a very big surprise for those of us who paid attention to history before. Well, let me, let me just say this, that the Trump administration had confirmed that what, took, what, they, what uh, the Senate reported in this meeting was actually true. I think the problem here is that Donald Trump, there's a, we have three branches of government. Donald Trump is obviously trying to bully one of those branches of government. I don't think that that's going to go too well. This isn't about activist judges at all, these are people who are hearing a case. This is about Donald Trump trying to bully people, which is what he's been trying to do in every aspect of his administration so far. He tried to do it to Nordstrom's today. So it's no surprise that he's trying to do it to the judiciary system as well. Well, since you mentioned Nordstrom's, let's take a look at exactly what happened. Uh, Donald Trump was lashing out after the retail chain dropped his daughter's clothing line. He put out a tweet. My daughter Ivanka has been treated so unfairly by Nordstrom. She's a great person, always pushing me to do the right thing terrible. Our White House spokesman Sean Spicer says this is just what any dad would do. Listen to this. I think this was less about his family business and an attack on his daughter. And for someone to take out their concern with his policies on a family member of her, his is just is not acceptable. And the president has every right as a father to stand up for them. You know, the chief ethics officer for the uh, Obama administration floated the idea of maybe a lawsuit 
Uh, Matt, most believe this is not exactly a legal violation, but do you see that it may come with a lot of problems here? Well, the problems are that his family has been trying to enrich itself while Donald Trump is president. His wife is suing, saying that, su suing somebody who said some bad things about her, saying that she lost the opportunity to make a lot of money basically while Donald Trump is president. Donald Trump is bad because this may have hurt Ivanka's ability to make a lot of money while he's president. At the same time as he's trying to enrich his family, he's got his buddies on Wall Street. I mean, they call this administration already Wall Street South. He's got his buddies on Wall Street who are so thrilled as he repeals all these Dodd-Frank and consumer protection regulations. These are his friends on Wall Street, and he says they can't get loans. So he's trying to enrich his family. He's trying to enrich his buddies. Where's the 4% economic growth that he promised? Where are the jobs for the people in Michigan that he promised? I think his focus is in the wrong place. Gina, even Ari Fleischer, who was a spokesman for the Bush administration, tweeted this. This is something a father would say. It's not the type of thing a president of the United States should say. Uh, do you agree that the president did cross a line here? You don't revoke your father card or your free speech card, ironically, when you take the office of president. But I, I will say that I do think that, you know, he's going to be out there being Donald Trump. And the people who voted for him knew that he was going to be out there being Donald Trump. Now, here's the thing. He doesn't need money. Ivanka doesn't need money. Let's not kid ourselves that they're trying to enrich themselves. It's good to hear, though, uh, those on the left who were completely unconcerned about the money and the lifestyle that Chelsea Clinton was gaining through the Clinton Foundation, finally concerned about people profiting off of public office. Um, you know, you have to remember that the Clintons, in their own words, were completely broke uh, when she was there. And uh, so how it is they came to be billionaires with her being Secretary of State is a question that I'm really glad people are starting to ask. And, and going back to also to Matthew's question about the things that President Trump could be doing, I think it's pretty impressive the things that he did before he was even elected in terms of bringing jobs to America. And just today, Intel committed $7 billion in new jobs. That's 3,000 new high-tech jobs here in America. That is so, going to so, pay great yeah, let me just Let me just, let and, me just, and so I think so that he has let me just say busy. this, Gina, as somebody who worked in the tech business for a while, a company doesn't make a decision in two months to do something like Intel's doing today. That's something that they've been planning, which I know firsthand for a long, long time, years. Well, that's number one. Number two, excuse that's me for exactly one second, Gina. Said. Excuse me for one second, Gina. Barack Obama, when he was president, we created 15 million jobs. I'm glad that there are 3,000 new jobs in Arizona, and I think that's terrific. I'd like to see Donald Trump get up to those numbers that Barack Obama had. Okay, and with that, yeah, we'll call it time. Uh, Gina Lallon and Matt Lippman, appreciate you. you both being with us. See you next time.